Hello, hi, my name is Sid. I'm from Sid's Wood Shack. This is behind me. It's where I do my woodcrafting, woodworking, whatever else I like to fiddle around with. If you're a young person between the ages of, let's say, 10, maybe 16, and you have never started a woodcraft project, I'm going to show you how to do it. It's very easy. I'll show you how to set up a, a wood shop as a young person, maybe some projects that you can do that are very inexpensive, and what basic tools you'll need to get the ball rolling. So come on into my workshop and let's explore a little bit, okay? Okay, welcome back. This is Sid at Sid's uh, Wood Shack and we're trying to help young people set up wood shops. <clears throat> uh, yesterday I did a couple videos on different tools, screws, different concepts of that nature, hammers, that I would recommend a young person would have in a wood shop if they're setting up a new shop. And again, if you're 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Uh, go over this with your parents. Make sure that they're pretty good on this. But once you start making them a project, a wood project, you know what's going to happen? During Christmas, during your birthdays, sometime during the year maybe, you will get gifts for your shop. You'll get bags of nails. You'll get new hammers. You'll get a saw. You'll get sandpaper. You'll get all kind of things to help you become a good woodworker. Now today I want to talk about saws. <clears throat> saws, every workshop has saws, every workshop needs saws. I have here six different saws that I use in my workshop uh, sometime or another. And I'm going to go over them, then I'm going to take the camera and give you some close up views of them. But let's start with this one here. This is probably the most, probably the most common type of saw that's in any kind of woodworking uh, shop. This is a crosscut saw. And you can just take any kind of a board, draw a line right where you want to have a cut, hold it steady, and then be very careful. I usually use my thumb as a guide, and I start cutting and move my hand away and stay on the line, and you have a nice, uh, you'll have a nice cross cut there. That goes across the grain usually. Anyway, that's how that works. This is a cross cut. Um, this is Stanley. It's very old. I've used it. No telling how many miles of boards I've cut with this over the last 30, 35 years. <clears throat> so that's a crosscut saw. Every shop needs a crosscut saw. Then another saw you might want to use, might want to have on hand just in case, would be a hacksaw. Uh, a hacksaw looks like this. Here's one. There's another one. And here's another one yet. Now these these hacksaws. The application for this would be PVC pipe, or if you want to uh, cut into some metal for some reason, there's a metal rod. See? And what you do is you can unloosen it here, and if the blade goes bad on you, it'll come right off, and uh, then you can put a new one on. That's how that works. Okay? So this is a hacksaw. I'm going to put this blade back on. Just put it back on, tighten this up and you don't want to tighten it too much and also you don't want to make it too loose because it'll pop right off while you're using it. So there's a nice hacksaw. This is fairly new in here. This is also Stanley. I think some of these maybe is Sears Craftsman. Uh, maybe some off-brand over here. I'm not sure what that is. Okay, so that's a hacksaw. That's a crosscut. Over here I have another small saw that tapers down to a tip. It's got a wooden handle it's got two bolts holding the handle to the saw, which you could actually take this apart and then take any rest off with a grinder with a brush on it. This is a keyhole saw. In a workshop, you might not use this as much, but it's for small, obscure cuts. It's also good for drywall if you want to cut a hole for like a receptacle or maybe somewhere else that just needs to be chopped off. Uh, so this is not a saw I use very often, but I have used it before. This is a keyhole saw. A very popular saw that I use in my workshop is a hard back saw. I guess this is typically called a back saw because the top is hard. You can't bend this. See this here? You can bend it. You can bend this one. But there's no way on earth unless you're Samson or whatever that you could move this. This is a hard back saw. Again, 
it's good for cutting uh, um, <laughs> it's good for cutting PVC plastic you get a nice straight cut it's also good for cutting angles see this if you have a miter box you can set the angle just right put this in and cut it if you need an angle let's say you're gonna build some um, frames for some pictures and you want to have an angle going around another angle that would be a 45 degree angle 45 45 and down here 45 then you could put them together put some glue there and tack those together and make some nice frames so there is an older one I have it's probably Sears Craftsman here's a new one newer one it's a cobalt uh, I don't think it has the uh, quality as this one that's a plastic handle this is a wooden handle but again same concept very hard back but it's movable look at that okay so you have your cross cut hacksaw keyhole saw hardback saw and then if you have an outdoor area and you harvest any kind of wood from your property like I have here and you want to cut through some wood outside here is a nice bow saw uh, it tightens up over here uh, this is rather old too but it sure works well outside you can cut all kind of nice branches uh, in your shop you can take a piece of wood like this and let's say you cut three pieces off why not make someone in your household like your mother or your grandma make them a snowman during Christmas so that I made a bunch of snowmen this past Christmas and gave them away as gifts so you could do that with that bow saw there you go then the last saw I want to mention it's called, it's called a coping saw it's more of an odd shaped saw it's got a very narrow blade on it these blades come off let's see with a handle there you go the handle will loosen it and there's some pins on the hand on the saw itself the blade that is let me loosen this some more there we go push this down there's pins there that hold it there and it comes right off packs of these are not too expensive you can buy a pack of different kind of blades for the coping saw at Home Depot Lowe's or probably a local hardware store okay then you put that back on and tighten the handle and this is really a good saw for something like this like a dowel rod just a little small cut that's all you need um, if you're real careful maybe you could even do an angle on it but I don't recommend that just something simple like like I said just like a uh, like a dowel rod anyway so there's your six type of saws a good workshop would have at least the cross cut the hacksaw the hardback and the coping saw you might not need the bow saw or the hacksaw as much but you will need those other ones so pick those up and again as your family members see that you want to put together a wood shop you will get these as gifts during the holidays and for your birthday or anniversary if you're older or whatever the occasion is anyway thanks so much for joining me I'm Sid from Sid's Wood Shack and this is my beautiful place where I make things and give them away okay I mentioned I would show you some close-up views of these saws again here is your cross cut saw for just doing regular style lumber like this maybe some uh, one by sixes one by fours two by fours it looks like this going all the way down very long the next saw we talked about was the the hack saw used for cutting metal especially or maybe PVC pipe there's three of them there you can see what they look like nice long um, handle nice long blade your keyhole saw for doing drywall work maybe making some holes maybe some slots for some receptacles in the drywall any other place that is awkward you can reach in real easy with it because it's got a long tapered saw out front there here is the hardback saws and again that's for cutting angles just like this and again you can see it's very hard here look at this let me show you you 
cannot bend that. The um, bow saw is used for cutting wood outdoors like branches and small uh, pieces of wood like this. See this? And you can make anything you want. You can, it's very handy. You have th two or three of those in your house. They come in handy. And then finally the coping saw is very unusual type of saw for doing um, for doing maybe some dowel rods cutting dowel rods is very fast very efficient and uh, you'll like that saw actually you could use the coping saw for doing small holes if you want anyway there it is there's a rundown of different type of saws used for any kind of a wood shop